Welcome to Electron Online. Continuing with the problem we did in the previous video where we found the impedance of the parallel branch, the total impedance of the circuit, and the current through the circuit, what we're going to do now is find the voltage at the branch right here and find the current through this branch and the current through that branch, I1 and I2. How do we do that? Well, let's start with the voltage at V1 and what we're going to do is use a voltage divider combination. So what we're doing here is say that V1 is equal to the input voltage on the circuit. So let's call that V input and the input voltage is right here. So V in is equal to 12 volts with a zero degree phase angle. And now we're going to multiply that times the impedance of the parallel branch divided by the total impedance of the circuit. So that's, uh, we multiply that times the impedance of the parallel branch divided by the total impedance of the circuit. And I kept the results of the last video right there handy so we can use those. So the input voltage is equal to 12 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. Then we multiply that times the impedance of the parallel branch right here, which is 9.06 and a phase angle of 55.49 degrees. And then we divide that by the total impedance, which is 28.95 with a phase angle of 71.615 degrees. All right, now we need a calculator. So we take 12 times 9.06 times 28.95. So we have a magnitude of, oh, let me try that again. Uh, 12 times 9.06 divided by 28.95 and that gives us 3.76. So the voltage at branch 1 is 3.76 as the magnitude and for the phase angle we take 55.49 and subtract 71.615. 55.49 minus 71.615 and we get minus 16.13 minus 16.13. So this is the voltage at one. Now that we have the voltage at one, we can now determine the current through the first branch here and the current through the second branch. Because we know from Ohm's law that I is equal to V over R. In this case, that would be V1. And instead of R, we're going to use the impedance of that branch right there. So that would be Z2. And Z2 has a single resistor in there, so that would be, uh, well, we'll just call it Z2 for now. So we plug that in, V1 is 3.76 with a phase angle of min minus 19, um, 16.13, divide by Z2, and so that would be 16 and a phase angle of zero. And so this becomes 3.76 divided by 16, that's a current of zero point, let's say 24, with a phase angle of minus 16.13 degrees. So this here is our current in branch one, not to find current in branch two. We take V1 again, but now we divide it by the impedance in the other branch, we'll call that Z3. Now notice that we have a combination here of a capacitor and an inductor. So this is lagging by 90 degrees, this is leading by 90 degrees. So we have 25 minus 14, that would give us a positive 11. So this would be equal to 3.76 with a phase angle of minus 16.13 degrees. So that's the same thing, that's the voltage at the branch point divided by Z3. And that would be a magnitude of 11. And since the inductor is has a larger uh, reactance than the capacitor, it wins out, and so we have 11 with a phase angle of plus 90 degrees. All right, when we divide that in there, we get the following, 3.76 divided by 11. So it gives us 0.34 for the magnitude of the current, and the phase angle, we subtract 90 from that, we get minus 106.13 degrees, and so now, we have the voltage at the branch point, V1. We have the current I1 to the first branch and I2 to the second branch, both with magnitude and the phase angle. And now we're ready to go ahead and start 
calculating the voltages across each of the components, and we'll do that in our next video. And that's how it's done.